But have you read anything I've written? I haven't read your books. Well, the, the, this book it hasn't come out yet, so I okay. can certainly forgive that. But I mean, just even the essays. I mean, I give reasons for my opinions. So I, I don't know what is so mystifying about it. I mean, you're advocating for the largest, most profitable corporations in the, in the world. They're definitely not the most uh, profitable, but some of them are very large just because of the economics of the thing. Well, I mean, what are more profitable? Apple, uh, you know, a lot of tech companies. It's just because of the nature of, of the product, particularly, you know, the American companies, because some a lot of the oil they have doesn't have that high a margin. You look at the Canadian companies, you know, that's more expensive to produce. So, no, but they're huge companies in part because they take huge risks and, and it's like a bank. They need to be able to limit the risk. But what's wrong with being a large company anyway? I mean, there's there's a lot to be. Why? But so a company is just, so I run a corporation. It's a small one, right? So at any given time, we might have between three and 10 people working with us. So if we became very, very successful, we'd invite more people on the team, and then it would become big, and then you would say it was evil. How, how are you making your money? But that's a separate question. I'm happy to talk about that. But I just this, the, the issue of a corporation, why isn't it legitimate for my company to become more successful? So in this case, it would be selling more books, giving more speeches. You know, those are the ways that I make money. Okay. Yes. So why? So let's say we brought on ten more writers, and they did really well, and we made more money. Why is that bad? Oh, really? I mean, adding ten writers to make more money doesn't seem like a bad thing. But we're talking. What if about it was ten thousand? Uh, what are you writing about? Well, but that's but so should you so you think it's bad or good depending on what we're writing? I'm just saying, what's wrong with a lot of people getting together for a common cause? What's your you, cause? Well, the the cause of the corporation is its product. I I'm not saying I'm a large cause. I'm saying, like a corporation that's producing oil is getting a large number of people together right. to produce a form of energy that's enormously valuable, which is why you and I use it all the time. Okay. It's like backup, right? You're producing. Okay. What's like okay? Here's here's a large cause, right? Large cause with a lot of people behind it. A lot of I mean, it's pretty modest given the amount of resources they invest in bringing everyone from around the country. But yes, yeah, a lot of people. I mean, I don't know, like fifty thousand, hundred thousand. I don't know. Like two hundred thousand. Okay. Uh, historically, they always lie about the number of people there, so I don't know what the yeah, truth I don't is. Know. Okay. Sony, anyway, what's the point? I, I don't see what we're getting so, at. Producing oil is different than writing about, I mean, like, I don't... I, I think producing oil, see, the thing that's hard for you to wrap your mind around is I actually think it's good to take that stuff, that glop out of the ground and turn it into gasoline and then go drive my car to jujitsu class and have a good time and then drive back home. And I think that's really good. And other people think we should be guilty for it. And I think if you look at the consequences of burning that kind of fuel and converting it to energy, they're enormously positive for every population that does it. So it doesn't mean that they're problem free, but overall, they solve far more problems than they create. So that's, I say I love something like that. It's like I love a friend doesn't mean we agree on everything, but it's a tremendous benefit. Well, without oil, a lot of my friends would be dead. There's, okay. There's also a lot of people dying from fossil fuels every year. Uh, I think that's a much more dubious proposition because overall life expectancy in every metric is going up so much that it's, it's unclear how you would make those correlations. And even if you did, you would have to keep in mind that fossil fuels are driving life expectancy up. So are, I'm just curious, are you afraid of what happens if we start restricting fossil fuels a lot? What about the people who need the electricity, who need it, you know, we need it for food? Uh, to grow food, you know, we need it for fertilizer, we certainly need it for the machines that grow food. I mean, the agriculture system is a whole other debate because that also needs to change. But, but I'm saying oil powered agriculture is the only reason that billions of people can I have, live. I have a 2008 mercury gram on two with a flexible Because what? When I burn TA because we have oil powered machines like driving our agriculture, that's the only reason that so many people can live today, that can have that much food. Like, you know, in, in the late 60s, they were afraid of running out of food and we had half the population. So if we stop, if we shut down any of those machines, people start dropping off. So that's the kind of thing I don't see this rally really caring about or thinking about. They just say we hate fossil fuels, but they're essential to life. 
So if you're coming up with a superior replacement and you can implement that, that's, that would be a good thing. But if you're just opposing it and just saying, oh, we'll replace it somehow, well, you know, billions of lives are on the line, including mine. I don't, I don't accept somebody saying, I'm going to outlaw what you need to live or I'm going to restrict it and, oh, I'll replace it somehow. I'll buy a better phone if they make a better phone, but I'm not getting rid of my phone because they say they'll build a better phone. Anyway, we've got to wrap this up. So any, any final th thoughts? Think, okay. I mean, you can wrap it up. That's fine. We don't have to continue this conversation. But I mean, you're welcome to, re you, I guess, you're aware of, you know, we have these things, but, you know, you can get, if you, I don't know. Okay, so, we, but we've been talking. Okay. But I'm saying like, it at a certain... You keep, like, making these weird, weird, like, s hypothetical situations. Hypothet are the hypothet from our no, no, the reality is that people... Are, around the world are empowered by using cheap energy to improve their lives right. and this rally is trying to stop the source of energy that they choose to use. That's very simple. No. Bill McKibben says... No, no, wait, 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 stop. Okay, so this will be stop. the last point. Okay. No, this is, you keep making points and I have to respond. What you just said is that there's all this cheap fuel that people rely on to use around the world, right? Okay. And there's that these people, myself included, yes. are just trying to stop people from using, from having energy. In the consequences of the policies that you support, absolutely. But that's not, that's clearly not what these people are trying to accomplish. What are they trying to accomplish? We want a just future for everyone without climate change, without environmental degradation, mm -hmm. and without exploitation of people, the planet, uh -huh. because these places where oil is being extracted uh -huh. have been devastating. So I, I understand that opinion, but what is your solution? So what's it's not an opinion? It's no, no, no. A fact. Okay, it's well, a fact. my okay, well, if you read my book, I have the actual facts on that, which I don't think you're quite aware of. I don't think you're quite that big picture. Every metric of human well-being has been improving steadily as long as we've been using fossil fuels. Okay, but like. There's no one around from before we were using fossil fuels to be like, hey, how happy are you? So you think maybe we should go back to a low energy society? No, because there are solutions. There are so that's what I'm asking you. What what policies? So let's say right now, let's say I what use. Let's say. Do you, I, want, do you want overarching solutions? Because there's not just one solution. But I'm saying the, the thing policies. I'm concerned. The reason I'm here is, is because I'm afraid of people forcibly taking away my freedom to use certain things. So my question would be, let's say I use 20 gallons of gas a week now, how many should I be allowed to use? Uh, again, a ridiculous hypothetical situation. That's, no, no, because if they, let's say they pass a carbon tax with the goal of getting rid of 80% of fossil fuel use, that means that I'm only really free to use, to do four. Right, but still that, I mean, even if we continue to burn those four gallons of gasoline, we're still pushing ourselves. So that's too much. Right. So you want to take away more than 16. No, I want to come up with solutions so you can... Because, but okay, I'm so, so then come up with a solution. That's my problem. You're not coming up with a solution. You're just attacking fossil fuels. I mean, okay. I, I, do you want to hear some of my ideas and solutions? No, I want to hear you reject... I, I want to hear you reject you don't want to hear restrictions. You don't want to hear I know I want I don't, don't hear, hear so excuse me an economic solution you do by going out and proving it on the market you don't go tell people in protests It's very difficult to do when the market is dominated by one of the most powerful industries in the world which happens to be fossil fuels. You know we have an administration that's more than willing to give you subsidies to get started on any of these projects and fossil fuels are the highest subsidized incorrect energy. according to the Obama administration not even close uh, wind and solar are the most subsidized by far. Percentage-wise, yes. Yeah, percentage right, percentage. Yes. That's, that's the only meaningful thing. False. Because where is our energy coming from? Wait a second. So you're saying, like, if somebody gives you a million dollars, right, and they give the rest of the population a million one dollars, is it fair to say you're more subsidized than the rest of the population? Or would you say, oh, no, they're subsidized because it's by percentage? Right? So you're saying it's a tiny industry because its product is not very valuable. So they're getting a ton of money? I didn't, I didn't say that their product was not Okay, but, but is it... Their product is producing energy. Okay. It's cleaner. Okay, do you have any, any 
I don't have any more questions here. Do you have any final questions for me? I mean, again, I'd recommend reading up on some of this. Uh, I don't think that you're very informed about the issue. I, I know the people you read. I've read them. Um, I'm aware of the actual data. So I think at this point, if you, if you, don't, if you don't look into so you said you're familiar with me. If, if, you don't, if you're not interested in reading my arguments and the data, which obviously we can't point to now, then you're, then you're not interested. So that's fine. But I'm not interested in talking to someone who's not interested in reading. I'm interested in talking to you. To, I, I think not, it's a pretense. So again, if you want to read something, we can talk after you've read it. But you rejected the thing I handed you. So anyway, okay. I'm bored. That's fair. Okay.